Hi and welcome back to my channel. Today we're looking at hybridisation of atomic orbitals. If you've not already watched the video on molecular orbitals, I'll put the link in the description box below. It would be really useful for you to watch that as well because it does link into the sigma and pi bonds part that we're going to look at here. Hybridisation is a theory which allows us to explain the 3D shape of different molecules. It also allows us to explain some of the chemistry that we see happening with some of the organic molecules. First of all, we need to look at the different types of covalent bond that we can form, as this will allow us to look at the different families um, in organic chemistry that we'll be looking at. So if we get two atomic orbitals overlapping, then we'll form a molecular orbital. There are different types of molecular orbital that we can form, depending on how we get this overlap to happen. The first overlap that we're going to look at is where we take two S orbitals. S orbitals, if you can remember back to unit one, and if you can't have a look in the description box below, there will be videos on atomic orbitals linked there. S orbitals are spherical in shape, so we'll draw two S orbitals here. And if we get them to overlap together, then we will form what we call a sigma bond with this sort of shape here. So here we have an end on overlap along the axis of the bond. So the bond is going this way here. So this is what we call end on overlap. If we were to take a S orbital and have an end on overlap with a P orbital, we would also form a sigma bond but it would look slightly different because we're joining it with a p orbital so here we're going to have what looks quite like a p orbital but slightly shifted to one side and this would still be a sigma orbital because we've had an end on overlap the final kind of sigma orbital that we could form is where we take two p orbitals and we have them overlap end on as well. So we've got our two p orbitals and they can overlap so that these two regions overlap here and we'll end up with another sigma bond with this sort of shape. So all of these were end on overlap. If you get your two atomic orbitals and they overlap sideways, and this can only happen for the p orbitals, where we have our p orbitals standing up. So here we've got two p orbitals. And we would usually think of this as the pz orbital, but that's not too much of an issue right now. You will then get what we call a pi orbital. And you're going to have these two top lobes overlap and the two bottom lobes overlap. But the overlap isn't as strong as having the end on overlap. It's a much weaker overlap. And you end up with these two lobes forming. So one at the top and one at the bottom but this is much weaker than the sigma and this is what we call a pi bond. The first family we're going to look at is the alkanes. You've been studying the alkanes perhaps since around S3 and you know these as a family of hydrocarbons where they have single bonds between the carbon atoms. You also know that each carbon forms four bonds. Now if you were to think now to what you know about electronic structure and electron arrangements, then this might actually seem like a bit of a surprise. So if we write out the spectroscopic notation for a carbon atom, you'll find that it is 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. And if we were to draw that out as orbital box notation underneath, you would have your two paired 1s2, and you know that they're in the inner shell, and then you would have two paired up uh, two s2s and then two single p electrons with a spare space here. So if you were to think about bonding you would say here we only have two unpaired electrons so really we should only form two bonds. However you know that carbon forms four bonds you've been studying that for a long time and you know that because it has four outer electrons. However two of those electrons are paired up how can they get involved in bonding? So one way would be to move one of the 2s into the 2p. So you would end up with 2s1, 2p3. 
So you would have this arrangement. You now have four unpaired electrons and yes, they could form four bonds. However, if we look at the sigma and pi bonds that we've just looked at there, where we have the S's overlapping and the P's overlapping, we got slightly different molecular orbitals being produced. This is not the case for the alkanes. We know that they form four identical bonds. So how can this be? What actually happens is we take our 2s and we take the 2p orbitals and we mix them together. And through mixing them together, we hybridize them to make what we call an sp3 orbital. It's called an sp3 because it's made up of 1s and 3p orbitals. So you take your s orbital and you add it together with three times your p orbitals and that gives you four sp3 hybrid orbitals. These four sp3 hybrid orbitals are all identical. This means that you'll end up with a tetrahedral arrangement around about your carbon. So you'll have one sticking up here, you'll have one going out to the side, you'll have one coming towards you and then one off to the back there. So you end up with a tetrahedral arrangement that you know of, of carbon. These sp3 hybrid orbitals are then able to do end-on overlap with the hydrogen atoms or with each other to form four sigma bonds. These four sigma bonds will be in a tetrahedral arrangement with an angle of 109.5 between them. From your previous studies of the alkenes, you'll know that it has a functional group of a C double bond C, and we're going to start here to have a look at the bonding within the alkenes. The bonding within the alkenes is different from that within the alkanes and we can start by looking at the evidence to show us this. The first piece of evidence is that a C double bond C is not twice as strong as a single bond. This means that it cannot be made up of two sigma bonds. The second piece of evidence is that you cannot rotate a C double bond C. That means that we have to have something in there which means that by rotating it we would break it. So there has to be some sort of bonding within there which holds the conformation of it just being the way it is without any rotation. Around a sigma bond you can free, freely rotate the atoms but you cannot do that around a C double bond C. So that means that we, we have a sigma bond there but we have something else there which is not as strong. And if we look back to the first slide where we were looking at sigma and pi bonds, the pi bond is not as strong as a sigma bond, and that is what your second bond is there. This means we have a different kind of hybridization. So whereas for the alkanes, we had the S and the 3P orbitals joining together to form an sp3, here we have your S and we take two of the P orbitals um, and we join them together to give us an sp2 hybrid. Okay, and we will have three sp2 hybrids because we've got three orbitals in, so we'll get three orbitals back out. That leaves us with one unhybridized p orbital, and we're going to be looking at that as the pz orbital today. So if we represent the carbons just here as dots, and we're going to put in the three sp2 hybrids, the sp2 hybrids are in a trigonal plane around the centre, so we've got one going this way and then these two, one going backwards and one coming towards you. There are sp2 hybrids. They are able to end on overlap to allow us to form a sigma bond. We also at the same time have this unhybridized p orbital, which is above and below the... <coughs> The carbon and is perpendicular to it. If we now bring these together, got our two carbon nuclei there, we can have this overlap here to form a sigma bond. We may also form sigma bonds here with hydrogens or maybe with another carbon. And then we have the p orbital. 
the p orbitals as you can see they're far apart they can't really get into overlap with each other and they don't have as good an overlap so they have this weak overlap region here which is what we call our pi bond so the red area is the pi bond and the blue area is our sigma bond so you have your sigma bond identical to that as it was in the uh, alkanes and then you have this weaker pi bond around it as well so this is not twice as strong as the carbon to carbon bond and the reason we cannot have the rotation if we tried to start rotating one of these carbons either away or towards us then you would no longer have the side on overlap of the two p orbitals and the pi bond would break and therefore you wouldn't have your c double bond c The final family that we're going to look at is the alkynes. The alkynes is a family you won't have looked at previously, but as you can probably tell from the pattern, we're going from single bond to double bond to now a triple bond. So we have carbon triple bond to carbon. And whereas the alkanes hybridized all of the orbitals together to give you sp3, the alkenes took an s and two of the p orbitals to give you sp2 we're now only taking an s and one of the p's to give us two hybrid sp orbitals so we have an s and a single p to give us two times sp hybrids that means that we also have two of our unhybridized p orbitals present as well so again if we draw our carbons here and we have our sp hybrids they are at 180 degrees to each other we still then have two of our p orbitals and this is going to be quite hard to draw so we're going to have one which is going above and below and then one that i'm going to represent as a circle here which is coming out straight towards you so another perpendicular one if we then bring these two to overlap to form a bond we've got our two carbon nuclei there we're going to end up with a sigma bond here and then we might be forming sigma bonds with hydrogens or other carbons out to the side there and then above and below we have these p orbitals where we're getting this weak sideways overlap to get a p orbital a pi orbital sorry and then you're getting a similar thing happening here where you're getting this weak sideways overlap to get another pi orbital so our red is a pi the blue is a pi orbital and then finally the purple is the stronger sigma orbital so again no rotation and not triply strong um, as opposed to the carbon single bond carbon. So some general notes before we go on to some examples. So all of your single bonds are sigma. They're always going to be your end on overlap. A double bond, it consists of a, sig a sigma bond where you've got end on overlap of your hybridized orbitals and then a pi bond from side on overlap of your unhybridized p orbitals and then finally your triple bond is end on overlap of your hybridized orbital plus two pi coming from the side on overlap of your two unhybridized orbitals so with this in mind we're going to have a look at some examples so here you're to calculate how many sigma and pi bonds you have within each molecule Pause the video now, give these a go and then come back to me so you can see what the answers are. Here looking at propene, we are looking for the number of sigma bonds and we're also looking for the number of pi bonds. So I'm going to try and highlight these in different colours for you. So sigma bonds are your single bonds and also one of the double bond. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have eight sigma bonds. And the other one of your double bond is your pi bond. So we've got one pi bond present. 
we do the same for this molecule here. So for our sigma bonds, we're going to highlight them in pink. So we've got a single bond here. We've got one of these will be a sigma and one of these. Both of the ones to the hydrogens on either of those will be sigmas. So that's another two for each. But then we also have another one coming off here and another one coming off here. <coughs> if you're unfamiliar with a skeletal formula, have a look at my video. The link will be in the description box below to help you out for that. So here we've got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight uh, sigma bonds. And now if we have a look at the pi bonds, you'll have one each for the two carbons there with the double bonds. So that is two. this example here will have three sigma bonds to the hydrogens we've got one here one of your triple bond will be a sigma this one here and these three as well so for sigmas we have three four five six nine sigma bonds and then looking at your pi bonds you'll have two so because we have a triple bond we end up having two pi bonds and then this final example which looks a little different we have a double bond to an oxygen. So we've got all of these single bonds here, which are sigmas. And then one of your oxygen ones is also a sigma. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we have nine sigmas. And it bonds in the same way. So we end up having one of these as a pi bond. I hope that you find this video helpful. Please remember to subscribe if you've not already and follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Chem for regular updates on new videos. See you in the next one. Bye.